Hello and welcome to this podcast series, Free Irish Women in Indian Nationalism, brought to you by the University of Strathclyde. My name is Lucille and this is episode one, Sister Nivedita. Now you've probably never heard of Sister Nivedita. I certainly hadn't before I started my research, but she lived an extraordinary life. Sister Nivedita, born Margaret Noble, was a teacher, a disciple of the Indian monk Swami Vivekananda, and importantly, an activist in the Indian nationalist movement. Margaret Noble's story begins in the town of Dungan in County Tyrone, an area which is now part of Northern Ireland. She was born on the 28th of October 1867 into a Methodist household. At the age of 17, she became a teacher teaching in schools in England and eventually establishing her own school in Wimbledon several years later. Yet the pivotal moment in her life came when she met Swami Vivekananda in 1895. Swami Vivekananda had been the chief disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, an Indian mystic who promoted Hindu philosophies as well as the belief that all religions are pathways to God. After Sri Ramakrishna's death, Swami Vivekananda travelled around the world to spread his teachings, the Swami came into Margaret Noble's life exactly the right time. She'd become restless and doubtful of her Christian faith, and she found in the Swami the truth that she'd been searching for. So in January 1898, she followed him to India, joining the small but increasing number of women travelling to India, which was under British colonial rule. He gave her the name Sister Nivedita, meaning the devoted one. She certainly lived up to this name, her work in the Ramakrishna mission began when she opened a school for the neighbourhood girls, teaching them reading, writing and religion. More and more she became attached to the local people and to India as a country. When plague hit Calcutta in 1899, Sister Nivedita gave herself to the relief work, nursing and caring for the patients and organising sanitation efforts in the slums. However, she became dissatisfied with her attachment to the mission, especially with its rule against political activism, and with the Swami's death in 1902, Sister Nivedita decided to break away and forge her own path. Years earlier, the Swami had told her, My mission is not Ramakrishna's nor Vedanta's, nor anything but simply to bring manhood to my people. Sister Nivedita had promised to help in bringing India to its manhood, and so she devoted the last decade of her life to promoting an Indian national consciousness. Many Indian nationalists saw this lack of national consciousness as something preventing India's development and its eventual independence. It was a difficult problem. The Indian subcontinent was vast, populated by many people of different religions, castes, communities and races, who felt very little connection with each other, and held no sense of shared identity or national feeling. Like other activists, Sister Nivedita tried to bridge this gap by touring the country, delivering lectures, and writing articles about India as a nation. In an address to the Hindu Boys Association, she encouraged Indian youth to think that the whole country is your country, and your country needs work. Struggle for knowledge, for strength, for happiness and prosperity. Let all these be your aims in life. She also aligned herself with several of the political associations that had sprung up in the early 1900s, including the Young Men's Hindu Union Committee, the Gita Society and the Dawn Society, along with Sri Aurobindo Ghosh, the yogi and nationalist, and C. R. Das, who would later become a leading member of the Indian independence movement. They tried to get these groups to form one revolutionary organisation to fight against the British, although forging common ground proved very difficult. Still, Sister Nivedita continued her work. When the official nationalist party, the Indian National Congress, split in 1906 between the moderates and the extremists, she encouraged unity. In an article, she wrote, Those who are fighting on different parts of the self-same field are wasting time and ammunition by turning the weapons on each other, instead of on a common foe. Clearly she believed that these divisions were stopping India from gaining independence from British rule. That same year, 1906, she devoted herself to famine and flood relief work in East Bengal. She never stopped working for the Indian people, right up until her death on the 13th of October 1911, at the age of 43. Her friend, the famous Bengali poet Rabindranath Tagore, called her a mother of the people. He said, The life which Sister Nivedita gave for us was a very great life. There was no defrauding of us on her part. That is, she gave herself up fully for the service of India. She did not keep anything back for her own use. Music 